Sorry friends, there was a technology problem. I think the technicians or technocrats have set right the issue and I think we will go ahead with that. Advances. Advance, audit of advance is one of the most important areas called by the bank audit. Advances generally comprise of money lent to the customers, debit balances in deposit accounts <coughs> and interbank participation certificates. This is a new concept, interbank participation certificates. Because money lent to customers, debit balance, deposit accounts, and all of your yes. this interbank participation certificates is the concept that that every bank they have a segment wise lending. Say for instance, tech, uh, priority lending. X bank has got the, the what was the they have achieved the priority lending beyond the threshold limits required. Beyond the threshold minimum requirements they have the cost. What the surplus lending is there? They are entitled to sell this surplus uh, to other other banks uh, who have not achieved these targets. Uh, that is one of the factors. Other factors are that the portfolio, portfolio, say let it be MSME advances or let it be any housing finance advance, or any kind of industrial finance advances or not. The portfolio is sold for a short period to other banks. These are the interbank participation certificates. So, this is a new concept has come in the banking industry. This is one of the years only this product is parked. So, if you have happened to carry out the branch audits of those branches, then we have to look into this aspect and study and understand what is the concept of interbank participation certificates. And you see the other aspects of the this product. Then, coming to the advances there, credit policy. See, every bank is required to frame their credit policy in accordance with RPI guidelines and this credit policy should be duly approved by the board of directors of the bank. And this policy has to be updated, updated at regular intervals. Regular intervals means generally at annual intervals. So, as auditors, we should get acquainted ourselves with the bank's credit policy. <coughs> then what are types of advances? The types of advances that broadly we can categorize in two categories. That is fund based advances and non fund based advances. In case of fund based advances, there is actual outflow of funds from the bank to the borrowers. Any kind of borrowers like term lending, working capital finance facilities like cash study, overdraft, bills purchase, all these kind of things are part of fund based advances. Non fund based advances, there is no outflow of bank's funds till unless they are involved or reward. Like bank guarantees, LCs, LOUs, undertakings, etc., they are part of non fund based advances. Friends, non fund based advances are more riskier than fund based advances. So we must be very careful about the non fund based advances. Loan segments to bank in banks. <coughs> Now, <clears throat> very recently now, all the banks, they have segmented, the branches also they have made, like large corporate banking branches, mid-top banking branches, MSME branches, small finance, business finance branches, personal banking branches, agriculture branch, finance branches, this kind of, even like in, in Bombay, they have got the <coughs> diamond branches, they, have, they, they finance only the diamond merchants. So, this kind of and branches are segmented. So when you happen to see which is the kind of branch what we have been doing all day, then you have to study what is the portfolio is there, what kind of nature of the activities of the branch. So you have to frame your audit program to suit to the requirements of this activities of the branch. There are statutory restrictions on advances, sir. There are prohibition to grant loans against the security of banks own shares. Section 21 of the Bank Regulation Act prohibits any bank to finance against its own shares. There are restrictions and advances to directors and concerns wherein they are interested. There is a cap on exposure to a single borrower at 15% or a group of borrowers within the group at 25% of the bank's capital. Cap on exposure to certain segments. 
So the ceiling, the capital exposure to segment by ceiling is kept for banks. There is no ceiling for borrowers. I feel this is the area that they keep it. keep a similar ceiling to the borrowers also. I think that will help to <coughs> manage the NPS. Lending thresholds are there. Then, what are general assessments in case of advanced research? The primary assessments are there. Amounts included in the balance sheet in respect of advances are outstanding as at the date of the balance sheet. Advances represent amount due to the bank. Amounts due to the bank are appropriately supported by loan documents and other documents as applicable to the nature of advances. There are no unrecorded advances. The stated basis of valuation of advances is appropriate and properly as the recognized accounting policies and practices and more particularly as per relevant statutory and regulatory requirements. Appropriate provisions towards advances is made as per RBA prudential norms. Obtaining audit evidence. This is the evaluation of internal controls related to advances and by examining validity of the recorded amounts, examining the loan documentation and its Bidding by legal department, <coughs> reviewing and operation, reviewing the operations of the accounts, especially accounts held under and operated with the other banks, but particularly there are multiple banking arrangements are there, we should be very careful. Examining the existence, impossibility, and values of the security from time to time, especially those given on a standalone basis. Checking the compliance with RBA norms, including appropriate classification and provisioning and carrying out appropriate analytical procedures. Reviewing other reports like credit card report, inspection reports, click reports will aid back to the auditors in carrying their attest function. Click reports, a system of central repository of information of large credits is introduced by Reserve Bank of India. This report contains all the default, default status of each borrower with all banks can be obtained from previous reports. In fact, whenever a new proposal in the borrower approaches the bank for extending the finance, it is the banker's duty to check the field report whether it whether the borrower appears as a default in the with other banks. And this <coughs> this is applicable for aggregate exposure of exceeding rupees five crores. Advances are proved under as SMAs. What is SMA? Let us go into the details of SMA. The, uh, <coughs> depending on the stress in the borrower's accounts, accounts they should be classified as SMA 0, SMA 1 and SMA 2. Principal or interest payment not overdue for more than 30 days, but accounts showing signs of incipient stress, this should be classified as SMA 0. Principal or interest payment overdue between 31 and 60 days should be classified as SMA 1. Principal or interest payment overdue between 61 and 90 days should be classified as SMA 2. And these SMA reports should be periodically submitted to the Reserve Bank of India. Then, <coughs> what is the stress? Particularly, when you consider that when you said incipient stress to be classified as SMA 0, so let us go into the details of this. Uh, at what circumstances they, an account should be considered as SMA 0? Delay in submission of stock reported statements or other quality returns, quarterly returns, for more than 90 days. If there is a delay in submission of quarterly returns or stock statements by more than 90 days, the account should be classified as SMA, irrespective of the performance of the account. Non renewal or uh, delay in renewal of facilities based on the auditor financials. If it is pending for more than 90 days, then this should be treated as SMA 0. <coughs> Drop of 40% or more in actual sales or operating profits as compared to the projections accepted by the bank at the time of loan appraisal and sanction, that should be categorized as SMA 0. Non cooperation or prevention by borrowers from conducting stock audits, it will be a serious issue. Reduction in drawing power by 20% or more after the stock audit. Should be immediately should be classified as this SMA 0 account. Drop and internal risk rating by two or more notches in a single review should be classified as SMA 0. Return of three or more checks or electronic debit instructions issued by the borrower in 30 days 
and the crores of non availability of balance or non availability of time power in the phone should be classified as SMA 0. Return of three or more bills or checks discounted or spent under collection to the borrower. Development, development of deferred payment guarantees and installments of letters, letters of credit and remuneration of bank guarantees and non payment of such development or relocation within 30 days that should be classified as SME 0. Request for extension of time either for creation or perfection of the securities as against the specified as against the time specified in the original sanction terms or for compliance with other terms and conditions of the sanction. Increase in frequency of overdrafts in current accounts. The borrower is reporting stress in the business and financials like gold support or the, 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 board, the status as the <coughs> displayed as for the audited financials, that is one of the area which banker needs to go through and to classify the account as SMA. Promoters pledging and selling their shares in the borrower company due to financial stress. This is another area where the <coughs> bank is to classify this account as SMA 0. <coughs> Signs of financial difficulties. Irregularities in cash credit, overdraft accounts such as inability to maintain stipulated margins, drawings exceeding the sanction limits, periodic interest debits remaining unrealized, failure and or anticipated failures to make timely payment of installments or principal and interest on term loans, delay in meeting the commitments towards payment of installments to do crystallized liabilities under LCA PGs, excessive leverage. Liability to adhere to financial covenants. These are the areas where you can say that is financial difficulty. So all these issues can be managed by having an appropriate credit monitoring system. By and large, banks do have a proper, adequate credit monitoring system. What are required as the auditors of the bank or branches? We need to study, we should, we should take aid from, from these credit marketing reports. What is credit marketing reports is there? Like the bank, they have a credit audits. <coughs> all advances we are special limits are subject to credit audit, which generally it is being carried out by the internal inspection departments, which is, it is a detailed report that will definitely help the statute branch directors while assessing the health of the borrower. Stock audits, which are, we are all aware, the stock audits are being conducted by general way of option. The one step legal stock audit needs to visit the borrower's place and uh, study, to take, apart from carrying physical verification, you should study the accounting principles, values of the inventories, book dates, assets, CP, and all just to come out with the revised DP based on his observations. A is some concept. I will come a little later on the ASM concept, portfolio audit, unit inspections. Finding in these reports and closure of proof, you see, all the banks they have a system of closure of their course. Let it be any report. Let it be a statutory audit report, a long form audit report, credit audit report, stock audit report, any report. There is a system in banking industry, excellent system that the report should be closed. Closure of reports means Whatever the observations, concerns raised in the report should be addressed, they should be taken care of and they should submit to the controlling authorities. And once the controlling authorities are satisfied that what are the concerns and issues raised in the reports, and they can order the branches to treat the report as closed. Credit and portfolio audit. This we have told stock audit services, ASM. Agencies for specialized monitoring of lost exposures are appointed. So this is a new concept, the ASM concept. I think this is where our profession can do render value-added services to the banking industry. So for to get registered as ASM, we have to impanel with the IBA. And based on the impanelment, this ASM assignments can be given only to the impaneled chartered accountant firms or cost accountant firms. And this ASM concept is, uh, is required with the credit exposure of 250 crores and above. And these agencies would be required to have constant touch with the borrower 
and monitor quality of purchases, inventory, related party transactions, cash flows, any diversion of funds, analysis is it, uh, exclusively covered and this will be a very helping tool to the banks to improve credit management. These reports are expected to be submitted on monthly basis. Then selection of samples. Sir. So we have to select the samples because considering the volume of uh, operations in the bank and also with the given period time we have to complete the bank audit means we have to because general by and large the banks are expected to have a appropriate internal control systems. We have to just overview the, the whether internal control systems are in place at the branch in specific which we are carrying out audit. And based on that, we should adopt, we should determine the materiality level and the size of samples mm -hmm. and select the samples. These samples, unlike any other corporate audits, we should go based, not based on the books of accounts. I would suggest that we should go the samples based on the review of the returns. You see, in case of banks, for every aspect a return is with respect, the branches are required to submit enormous number of returns to the controlling offices. Anything, any deviation, any area you have, there will be a return control return will be there. It may be monthly or it may be quarterly, sometimes it may be annually also. But what we should do, we should ask the branch head to use the whatever returns you are submitting to the controlling offices and from there you can pick up the returns, you can take the copies of the returns, you can reveal the returns, that will give you, that will help you a lot in carrying out the audit in the given time. Say like, <coughs> for example, you can ask for top exposures, advanced exposures, which is the limit. We can pick the materiality based on materiality, beyond the materiality, you can ask for the advances list. Stress the accounts, SMA accounts we have discussed enough, SMA returns you can ask, restructure the accounts, all the accounts restructured the return is there to be submitted. Unsecured exposures beyond threshold limit based on the materiality. Pick mortality cases, sir. A return is there with mortality cases, sir. A loan is given today and tomorrow it becomes NP. So this is the pick mortality cases, very important to have to look into that. And accounts upgraded during the given period. Accounts related to adversely as for the bank's internal ratings. Accounts where other features are noted by previous audits. These are the areas which we have to look into that to, to have an effective audit in the given period. Then coming to the term loans. See, I am, friends, I am not going to go into details of RPA prudential norms. I just wanted to place certain points based on my experience well, which I have faced during the course, which I come across during the course of my audit of bank branches. Branches are even at circle office or head office level. level. This is based on that I have just jotted such a point, which I thought I, I felt it is appropriate to discuss with all the friends on this issue. In case of downloads, check if the loan, if the loan is transferred to borrowers, current or CC accounts. If any term loan is Credited to the borrower's CC account and cash rate account, this is a weak point. This is not acceptable. The payments should be made to third parties who are the suppliers of capital goods. Even particularly when the suppliers of capital goods, say machinery or equipment or anything is there, first they should see whether the goods have been submitted. The court, whichever court is the finally with, with the borrower has said yes, out of this court is the I have selected this particular supplier, then payment should go to the supplier, the same supplier only. There are cases which have come across uh, the invoice of the supplier's invoice. Uh, it doesn't contain VAT registration number, the GS registration number, and uh, it, 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 uh, if you see that one, the telephone number spot they are given, it is still it is given as a uh, six digit number, whereas it should be eight digit numbers. Uh. So this kind of Things, it is a kind of a forensic audit what I am telling, but these things will help you to see that whether the advance is given in Julian or not. Then we have to work out ideal balance as per the sanction terms and check whether it exists more than legal balance exceeding 90 days. If so, then account should be 
downgraded as NPA. Check source of trades in the account at the, around the flag end. Any related to your quarter end or related to your end or level, whatever deadline when the deadlines are reached, <coughs> when the amount of trade we have here, it is very important for us to examine the source of funds. <coughs> Cash credits. Cash credits and more are the most popular type of financing by the banks to the business and industry. Check if any transactions are made with sister concerns and whether the same are permitted in sanction terms. See, generally, ideally, when the, the, the sanctioning authority, the bank, at the time of appraisal, they should ask what are the group concerns, what are the transactions between the intra transactions between the group, and whether their intra transactions are really essential or justified, they should examine. And then, if, if at all, they say they should, either they should keep a cap on this. Related party transactions, balances, or they should exclude for the purpose of security. If that is not happened, if you come across any such lapses are there, it is our duty to comment in the non formatted report against the advances appraisal system of the advances. Check if any checks are retired in the account for more than three times in a month. I think already automatically it should be accounted to be classified as SMA0. And cross-check the stocks and book test statements with audited financials of the borrower as CMA data published by him. I think this is a very, very important aspect. And enormous number of cases we have found that there is a divergence between the stocks submitted to the banks with the ABS. I think uh, considering this only, where I referred some time back on 25th February when the MCA has come out with the car of 2020, one of the clauses there is the advances sanction limits are 5 crores from the one the single bank or various banks enjoyed by the borrower. The auditor has to state that whether the quarterly returns submitted to the bankers are matching the books of accounts. This is additional responsibility. Though the stock audit is there, unit inspections are there, requirement in case of we are required to report on the, in the cargo report. Now by what happens? Sir? The stock statements are submitted to the bank. The branch, what they do, date of receipt they will put, they will feed in the system, stock has to submit it, and what are the drawing power without going to detail, they just feed, they put it in the file. Only <coughs> when the inspectors or the statutory branch auditors, maybe some business the branch, then only the file they will take out and they remove the dust and they give you to look the stock statements. They don't analyze what I mean to say that I try to drive the point that the branch of sales, majority of cases, they do not analyze the stock statements submitted by the borrower. They take it as a formality. So that should not be prevailed. Then CC accounts where renewal is due for more than 90 days. Because this is one of the symptoms of SMA0 accounts. So this area we have to see. I will just uh, deal further on this point. Accounts with our, where outstanding is greater than DP amount limit with irregularity date, where are the amounts across the DP limit, then how long that has continued, what is the day and number, how many number of days the irregularity continued is to be seen. Then devolved PGs are kept in a separate uh, account. Add the same to CC outstanding to check whether the combined balance is within the DP limit. This point also have built the other way. See, here what happens? Many of the banks, they have the system that any payments made under development or invocation of the BGs or LCs should be debited to cash rate account. Even RPA circular very clearly states that any payments made against development or invocation of the guarantees or LCs should be debited to principal operating account. Principal operating account means generally it is a cash rate facility, cash rate account. If the cash rate facility is not enjoyed by the borrower, it should be debited to this current account. But the bank, some of the banks, they say they just park in separate account. Then it is very, very, very essential for us to see that 
while working of the DT, whether the amount passed in separate account or is combined and reviewed the DT based on the combined outstanding balance. Then permitting withdrawals in the overview accounts. Once an account has become overdue, even cash credit account is overdue, here yeah, remittance with the renewal is not placed. Then for already balance, outstanding balance has crossed the DP limit. Further, further drawals should not be allowed. If that is the way, there is something wrong in that. So that needs to be looked into. Ensure stocks imported against FLC or procured under LC are reduced from the stocks while working DP. This is a very important factor which many of the times we miss. So what is it when the stocks are imported under FLC or LC? By giving the LC and FLC itself, the stock is taken as a security. Then, then again, when the amount stocks are received, again if we take it as a book test, the stock statements for, the, for cash rate facilities, even that is counted as security, means it amounts to double financing. So this factor we should be keep in mind. Check rate summation CC account forms substantial ratio of turnover. This is a very important factor. Because any borrower ideally he has to do all the transactions through cash rate account. That in order to judge the performance of the borrower, this will help and the practice that the borrowers they do the transactions with other banks or through current accounts, it is not acceptable. And check if credits in the account are reversed and subsequently due to desire of the checks, this is one of the weak points. And also this year, in this case, if we, <coughs> particularly when the system is picking up the advanced uh, the NPS, uh, such classification is done by the system, very important factor, when we see that such debits and credit due to this one check should be ignored and they should work out whether the uh, subsequent credits have been received in the account to meet the interest debits made at least. Check if any cash transactions, heavy cash transactions are reflected in the CC account and justification thereof with the nature of business. Check if any housing loans, term loans, process are created to CC account. This already we have discussed. Review DP history statement. A DP history statement can be generated through core banking system. So this, this will be helped us to assess the health of the borrower. Check abnormal working progress figures appearing in the stock statement. So whenever the manipulations are made, in the stocks, work in progress is the leverage. So generally no records will be maintained from WIP. So people they tend to inflate work in progress figures. Now we have to, there, where you find that abnormal work in progress figures are stated compared to the total inventories, then you should go into the nature of the activity, whether that much work in progress can be there. So for instance, let us take one oil, uh, concern as uh, edible oil concern or solvent oil factory. The materials which can be kept in preparatory conditioning or uh, digesters and all that is there, it plans has that its capacity. Beyond that capacity, it cannot remain in working progress. So, uh, similar, that kind of analysis we have to carry out. Check sources of trades in account, whether through debits in the current account from related parties. Uh, this is uh, one very an important area which we need to look into that. Then you will both send to sanction authority considered as renewal. See, this is one area which we should, we should keep. See, the, since the banks are working under core banking solutions, uh, once the account limit is expired, the system will not permit, permit any operations in the account. So in order to facilitate the operations in the account for mere administrative reason, the bank's head office, they will give surplus that once renewal proposals, proposals are sent to the sanctioned authority, you mark that it is a sanction so that the system allows operations in the account. But that should not be considered as a factor for asset classification. Unless limits is sanctioned by the sanctioned authority, you should not be considered as a limits are sanctioned and this very important factor which I have to keep in mind.
holding on operations without renewal. Holding on operations, sir, some of the banks have got the system of holding on operations, sir. It is something like, sir, Brahmarshi Vishwamitra has created Krishan Kusvarta. I think all of you must be aware. When by <coughs> Brahmarshi Vishwamitra assures, promises, sir, when Mr. Krishan to that he will send him to Swarga. When he has sent a person to the Swarga, Lord Devendra <coughs> did not, does not permit him to enter the Swarga. When he did not, could not reach the heaven, Brahma Shusamitra, what is there, out of his divine powers, he creates a parallel Swarga. He says, Guru, this is the Sabda of you, you can enjoy here. That is descent to Sabda. Something like that here, the sanctioning authority, he is not comfortable to renew the limits, to sanction, to renew the sanction. And at the same time, for various reasons, they don't want to call the account. They say that you hold an operations. Holding an operations is Yes, it's just a pillar which is conveyed to the auditors that this account has got certain insufficient stress. The bank is trying to cover. So the only thing is, you have to see that wherever there is currency extensions or uh, <coughs> short renewals or holding on operations are there, whether at least a minimum, minimum appraisal has been carried out. Basic documents are received. Generally, what they say, audited balance sheet is not received, we have permitted uh, holding and operations or permitted short renewals. With the basic, the audited balance sheet is not there, at least a problem financials are obtained from the borrower, they have reviewed and then they have kept for short renewal. And that also that even as per prudential norms, if the renewals are permitted only twice, not exceeding 90 days, if the for 180 days, the renewal is not there, account should be automatically slipped to 9 PS. So, this is one area which we have to keep. Transaction voted to current accounts, this is also one of the weak area. The, all the borrowers are expected to note all the transaction to cash credit accounts. Sometimes they argue that current accounts are opened and the current account numbers are given to various other agencies and statutory authorities, so they cannot close the current accounts. If such arguments are put forth, what ideal solution should be there? You make the current account only for receiving balances. Sir. You block the withdrawals. Only the, all the balances, once it is, it is reached the current account, there should be auto transfer to cash rate accounts. Sir. So that will help the appropriate date monitoring of the account. Sir. Packing credits. Sir. Packing credits are granted generally to exporters. Sir. There are two types of facilities given, pre-shipment credits and post-shipment credits. Sir. Operations of raw material procurement to dispatch of finished goods, sir. right from procurement of raw material to dispatch of finished goods is covered under pre-shipment. And when the finished goods are dispatched, sir, from the stage of dispatch of finished goods to the realization of the payment from the customer is a post-shipment credit. Sir. Generally, you cannot very is important, but particularly for the pre-shipment credits or post-shipment credits, what is the operating cycle of the borrower? So, I mean, the tenor should not exceed the general operating cycle. A case is there where they can produce the force, it is a simple process, within 15 days time it can take. The raw material is available, plenty is locally. Once you process the raw material, you can make convert into finished course and dispatch, say 15 days. So there if you give 90 days tenor, then that is not justified. Evidence of exports made and trade with the debts of the foreign customers should be ensured. This is very important aspect. Sir. Ensure that DP for cash credit accounts should exclude the securities called by packing credit. SP and current account balances. Sir. Checks purchased without proper sanction. Very old RB circular is there. The bankers are not expected to extend loan by bill purchase without proper sanction. <coughs> Sometimes you may go, you are operating only a savings bank account, you will ask them, sir, you just, I have, I have got a check, sir. you please discount this check and give. Banker is not expected to, unless 
with the proper sanction as per the delegation of our sir. Check purchase at the end of the year and return, same is return subsequently. This is the mail, what to see. For 31st of March we are carrying on the audit, 25th, 26th, a check is created to the account and the check remains in clearing for 3 to 4 weeks later. So that is not permitted. Allow overdrives by transferring funds to other loan accounts of the borrower to your claim. The borrower will have multiple accounts. I have come across one instance. A group, a borrower group has got 30 different accounts, 30 different entities are there. They are enjoying great facilities from the bank. Surprisingly, out of 13, 5 of the accounts are with one branch, 4 accounts are with another branch, and another 4 accounts are with third branch. Always teaming and getting happens. The particular account is falling over to, then on 89th day, the funds are transferred from other parties' accounts from operated from third branch, it will come here. When the other side, this has come from outside, this is from the branch only, other branch has come, external clearing has come. So this is the name source. But if you go in the escape of that, it is nothing but that account from there funds are transferred. By transferring the funds, that account stands overdrawn. But that overdrawal is less than 90 days time. That is one argument that the branch will say, this is overdrawal, it does not come 90 days, you should not slip the accounts down, downgrade the account to NPA. But here, the account which has already become NPA by shifting that fund transfer, then they, they retain the account as standard. And also, that if you look at this, the instance which I have come across, entire bank, even of top level management also, they are not aware that what is going on with this particular group. Then after enormous discussions on the going to this uh, in depth of this particular account, the bank's management has agreed that if there is a lapse in the whole great monitoring system. And first step they did, all the 13 accounts are shifted to one single branch. So that at least they know that what is the happening in the branch. This is the kind of activities can happen with the branch. Because generally, particularly the borrowers who are engaged in the real estate sector and all, they do not, they do not be in financial discipline. So they, neither they have financial discipline. In such case, it is the duty of the bankers to guide the borrower to bring the financial discipline into the borrower so that the banker will be safe enough and also he is helping the the borrowers. <laughs> bills purchase. So bills, there will be two types of bills are there. Lucent's bills and side bills. Side bills can never be renewed. No rollover is permitted in case of side bills. This is more dangerous. Only nuisance bills can be deferred for date of maturity. External sum bills can be done only as per later. Policy of the bank that should be issued. In case of foreign bills, total period should not exceed 360 days. Loan delivery system of bank credit. This is again a new concept. RBI has come out with a circular on 5th December 2018. Stating in order to enhance the trade discipline among the large borrowers, loan delivery system is introduced. What is the loan delivery system? Large borrowers with exposure of working capital beyond 150 crores are required to split the loan into cash credit amount and WCL amount. 40% of the minimum should be treated as WCL, repayable in installments or bullet payment. With the minimum tenor of seven days, effective from 1 for 2019, and this threshold limit has been revised to 60% effective from 1 7 2019. So, this is the WCL component is not eligible for renewal or rollover. This is an important factor. So why is they have brought, particularly in case of large corporate cash rich companies, they have a practice of getting the loan sanctioned, working capital limit sanctioned by the banks and they never utilize the limits. So this will cause with great concern to the banks and it will be 
burden on the cash in this uh, capital deficit ratio of the banks. So in order to prevent this kind of practices, this loan delivery system has been introduced. We need to look into that particularly when large borrowers are there. Even in case of working capital demand loans granted for a specific period, are repayable installments or by bullet payments at the end of the tenor. These loans cannot be renewed or rolled over beyond IRS norms. Underground portion would attract 20% of the conversion factor for capital deficit purpose. Agricultural advances. In case of agricultural advances given through primary agricultural property societies or farmers service societies, only particular borrowers are going to be treated as NPA for default beyond two or one crop season for short or long term duration crops, as the case may be. We are all aware that. The deciding the whether it is a particular crop is a short term or long term will be done by SLBCs. But when the borrower has borrowed finance through PSCs or FSS and also he has directly borrowed from the branch directly, in such case, if the borrower direct borrowing has become NPA, automatically the amount borrowed through PSC and FSS also should be treated as NPA. There is a as per pair of 4 to 10 of the IRS terms. This is very important factor which you should keep. In respect of short term advances granted to small and marginal farmers, total interest debited to an account should not exceed the principal amount. I think this is a very, very important factor. If you see the agricultural advances, small business uh, finance and marginal farmers, uh, small, uh, small advances for marginal farmers, uh, the advance granted 10 years back. The various schemes, the, the, the SLPCs, they declare this is a fraud, uh, flood hit area or a drought area, and then the restructuring is done, extension of time is given, rollover, and all at the end of the day, when you see that 10 years loan account still continues to be standard, and original loan is given as 1 lakh, now total outstanding is there against 1 lakh, it is 3 lakhs and other. So, such thing is not permitted, the balance should not cross. The principal amount this factor we should take and gold loans, particularly in the, in the rural branches and all, they say that all the gold loans are agricultural loans. That is not correct. Only the gold loans borrowed by the farmer for his entire purposes by providing the sufficient evidence and declaration, then only will be used for agricultural gold loans. Otherwise, it is not an agricultural loan. Then, Advances given to dairies, fisheries, and other allied activities are not to be treated at all with the agricultural crop loans. See, they, they are here, question of two crop seasons, one crop season for long term duration crops should not arise, and for this case, accounts, 90 days norms should be adopted for asset classification. I have given the circular reference of, in this case, if this can help. Educational loans. Education loans are very other regarding some of the banks. Lot of education loans are pending for decades together. Ensure that disbursements are made direct to the institution where the borrower pursues his studies. In case of education loans, more term period is too long. You see, a professional course is joining, a person is borrowing loan for taking up the professional course. The course itself will take to four to five years. After completion of the course, then he has to take up employment. That for that another one year time they give. After employment, then he starts, repayment will start. So in the case of any education loans, average is six to seven years will be the moratorium period. Mind it, during moratorium period, interest needs to be serviced. Sometimes even interest servicing also is deferred. Then check the adequate controls are being built in the system to identify the accounts and NPAs as per the sanctioned terms. This is a very important factor. Ensure that the interest in service we discuss, article may pick up the account sanctioned beyond a cutoff date. Looking for this one, you can say, say, you, you please provide us a list of accounts sanctioned and outstanding for more than seven years, more than eight years. Then you can see what is the status of accounts, then why, then it will give the result, it will give the results. Demand loans, sir. Ensure that loan against current deposits of the branch only are given. 
The practice of giving loan against a term deposit, another branch of the same bank also is not proper. They must ideally give the loan against a term deposit of the same branch. And giving the loan against term deposit of another bank is out of question. They should not give. This is the idea of fraud prone area. One should be very, very careful in this case. Loan against LLC policies. In case of loans against LLC policies, communication, direct com communication from LLC is very important. They should, you should not, banks should not consider the communication brought by him. They should have direct confirmation from the LLC. Ensure KYC norms are duly compared with in respect of all demand rules. This is very, very important. Infrastructure road projects. In case of infrastructure road projects, generally the, the concessioner enters in the concession agreement jointly with the government and the nation, in case of road by the National Highway Authority of India. Then they furnish the projections. Based on the projection, generally this will, <coughs> this will live for 30 to 35 years. So then during the period the entire tenor, the so what are the cash flows received, what are the cash flows projected and approved by the bank based on their appraisal, then the discounted value is determined. That discounted value of cash flows is considered the security for the purpose of this loan. But we have to look into that when the project is commissioned, whether the actual cash flows are nearer to the projections. Many cases we have come across that actual projects, actual receipts, Actual cash flows are not even 30%, 40% of the total projections. In such cases, it is ideal, it is advisable to revert the security value based on the actual productions or at the most if it is revised projections are made and approved by banks and the NHA, then we have to go by the revised projections. DCC evolution and change in the payment period. Reason of DCCO is the consequential shift in repayment schedule for equal or shorter duration, including the start date and the, the end date of revised repayment schedule, will not be treated as restructuring only under following conditions. If a DCCO is within two years for infrastructure projects and one year from non infrastructure projects, from original date of DCCO stipulated in the, the time of financial closure, all other terms and conditions should remain the same. So this factor we should keep. Coming to government guaranteed accounts. Generally this phenomenon is that, myth is that if it is government guaranteed accounts, accounts should not be treated as a non-performing sector. No. Ensure that if it is the central government guaranteed accounts only are exempted from asset classification norms. Mind it, a letter given by secretary of the respective department would not amount to guarantee. A guaranteed document to be executed by the government and the borrower and the bank, then only it will be considered as a government guarantee. And also we have to see the terms of the guarantee. There are cases where come across that guarantee document contains that the government has guaranteed interest payment at the rate of 12% per annum. Whereas bank is charging 14% per annum. So additionally, so far, there is no, no restriction for, for, to the bank for charging higher rate of interest. But whatever the interest they charge higher, over and about 12% indicate in the guarantee document that 2% does not support with the guarantee of the central government. In such cases, the amount is not realized that interest should be, additional interest should be duly provided for. Then, this is only benefit is only for asset classification and not for recognition of the revenue. So once it is across the limits, asset classification benefit may be extended, but at the same time revenue should not be recognized. Date of NPA. Date of NPA is a great significance in asset classification probably. Date of NPA should, should be reckoned on the basis of an actual event that causes the asset as an NPA. Some of the banks, they follow the quarter end or month end or annual end as a 
date of MPA to capture. That is not correct. It should be gone per the record of recovery. Based on the event only, MPA should be date should be captured. And also we find from previous year's financial statement uh, advances returns and current advance returns if we see the date of MPA would be changed. Date of MPA cannot be changed. The MPA date cannot be changed. If we find that any error has occurred while fixing the data NPA date, then there should be have a sufficient control system that it should go to the highest level, but maybe ideally it should be at the TD at end office after getting the appropriate sanction only and after satisfying that there is an error in the definition of the NPA date, then only they should change. Yeah. This reminds me, when 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 the golden days one of my friend, he was trying to find a match. He is an unsuccessful bachelor. He printed the horoscopes, first edition of 100 horoscopes he printed. All the 100 horoscopes exhausted, he did not find a match. After a couple of years, second edition printed, he could not find a match. Then finally, he printed third edition. Then when you compare the first, second and third editions over the lapse of five years period, surprisingly you find Age, is, age remains same, date of birth will keep changing. That should not happen here. Here, NPA date should remain constant, NPA date should not change. Asset clarification should go from substandard to doubtful, doubtful to last asset. So that is the fact what we should keep in mind. Add identification of NPS. Every bank is at the CBS and the system should enable to recognize NPA automatically as per potential norms. This is the mandate requirement. But in all cases, when an IDA NPA report is generated by the system, then there are requirements that manual intervention is required. And that because this such a complex conditions are there in all cases, system IDA recognition of NPA is not possible in all ways. But wherever manual intervention is there, a trial is kept. A trial is kept with the system. A return can be generated. Like for instance in Kendra Bank, the ID 280080 is return which gives the deficit. What are the asset classification changes by manual intervention? So that is once if we go through those that return and if we can inquire into the details, justification for manual changes, that will solve the problem. The, the report gives the history of moments of NPS during the given period. The SBA statute grantors needs to inquire for this report and review the same. System tracks manual intervention of asset classification and return can be generated, like in case of Scandra Bank, SIM 15, wherever manual intervention happens in asset classification, the system will 